Hi, I'm Marcia Mason with Rancho Cordova Arts and today I'm going to show you how to mask your watercolor. Now if you want to save the whites on your paper when you're doing a lot of stuff that it would be hard to work around, especially small areas, it's sometimes good to mask out what you want to stay white while you, instead of painting around them. So in general, you can mask with tape, removable tape. I'm going to use some artist tape today. You can get it in any art store. And you can also use masking tape, whatever you have, that when you remove it, it won't pull up the paper with it. You don't want to damage your paper. So I have cut out some little pieces of tape here that I'm going to put down. This is a cold press paper, so you have to get the edges down. They have to get into those little valleys as well as hit the hills up top. And then you can also use masking fluid. Now, uh, I'm not going to be talking today about oil pastels and wax crayons that can be used as a resist to watercolor because then you're really talking about mixed media. You're talking about oil and watercolor, or wax and watercolor. But uh, we definitely want to do something in watercolor with the areas that we mask out early on. So we're just going to talk about these two things, the tape and masking fluid. Now there are many brands on the market. They all work, but my favorite is Daniel Smith. It comes in this lovely little squeeze bottle with uh, five little nozzles that you need to cut off so that you can get the fineness or the thickness of uh, writing, essentially, that you want. So I'm going to take a couple of these and just clip them to different lengths so I can show you what I'm going to do here. Okay, so I've got one I left kind of long. That's a fine tip, and it is very fine. And then I've got one that's a little thicker. Uh, I like Daniel Smith because it doesn't stain the paper and I have not had problems with it tearing even if I leave it on quite a long time. Okay, now I'm going to clip. Ah, there we go. Love a fresh bottle of masking fluid. Okay, I'm going to use the thick one first. If I can get that on. Hmm. Oh, I may have... Gosh, I wonder if I clip that too long. Well, you know what? We'll just use it like this. Okay, I'm just going to squeeze it on. Oops! Hello! Well, you can see that I'm not very well practiced at this. It's been a while since I've masked something, but we will make do. It doesn't have to be, it doesn't have to go on this thick. Let's just say that. Okay, now I have covered all the paper. That's going to take a little longer that, to dry than usual. Whoops. Hello. So, uh, I'm going to see if I can use this a little bit different way by sticking the little nozzle through. Now we'll see if that works to get something finer. If it doesn't, we'll just chalk it up to having messed up the, the demo. Don't cut too much off the the stem of the bottle. Let's try it over here. Oh, that'll work. Okay, let's put a big heart there. You can also apply, that's a little better. You can also apply the masking fluid with a brush. Now, if you have used masking fluid, you know that it's very important to uh, wash the brush quickly before the masking fluid dries because it is a real mess uh, to get off of a brush. So actually if you use a, a cheap old brush that you don't mind losing to paint then um, use that. Uh, you can also use um, a twig or you can spatter it. In fact, let's do a little spattering since we are not going to be using 
the little nozzle that has now fallen into the masking fluid. <laughs> okay, we're just going to go in here with the brush and spatter that a little. You can see that's a pretty big spatter, but hey, we are saving it. Okay. Okay, there we go. And just put that right back on. Uh, this will dry out. Um, it's good to, to uh, all of them dry out. Uh, they get old, so be sure you have it nice and tightened down when you're done using it each time. Uh, you want to make sure you can finish your painting within a week or so. If you leave the masking fluid on uh, longer than that and much longer than that, uh, it can stain the paper, it can wreck the paper when you try to get it off. You don't want those things to happen. So uh, I'm using a good quality cold press paper. That's the one that has some texture to it. It's been stretched on this board and I have marked out a four by six inch area because I like to use standard sizes. It's easier to mat them and frame them. And then what I'll do is uh, when I take it off this board, I will cut along the line with a paper cutter to make it nice and clean. Now we're just going to let that dry for a little while and then we will paint. All right, the masking fluid has pretty much dried. That took a long time because I put it on so heavily. And you could see where I touched it to see if it was dry yet and uh, it smeared it. So you do have to be a little careful and let it thoroughly dry. My recommendation is that you don't put on as much as I did if you want to color if you want to put on paint anytime soon. So now these areas are masked out and they're going to be white. So we're just going to lay down some color around this. Put a little bit of rose matter. Very pretty color. Not light fast. Rose matter is uh, an organic uh, color that fades in the sunlight. So the only time I really use it is when I'm going to be printing something. Uh, there, we'll put a little permanent rose on top. It's That's more the effect I was going for, although the pink is very, very pretty. Okay, let's see. Let's get a little bit of that going, and a little more yellow. Ooh, it's turning into a pretty, very pretty orange. Make that a little brighter. And I am totally just fooling around here, adding color. Just uh, enough color so that the white will stand out when we're all done. Oh, that's a gorgeous color. Let's do some of that. Oh, yes. Oh, hair. Don't need that in there. Oh, yeah. This is a manganese hue, I believe. There we go. Yes, yes, yes. Maybe a little up here. Once we have our masking off, it will hardly take any time at all to... Okay, there we go. Get a nice purple in there. And a little phthalo. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Yes. There we go. Oh, and some coral. That is a pretty color. There we go. See, 
that with that masking I can just paint right over it I don't have to worry about it it's really great I've got a little star thing going there so I'm gonna and let's see what colors should our little maze be in here. That's pretty. Ha ha. Okay. So I'm going to let this dry overnight. And uh, tomorrow I will remove the, the uh, masking, show you how to do that. And. You will be ready to go. There, I like that a little brighter. Okay. I think that ought to do it. We will check it out tomorrow when everything is thoroughly dry. And let's see, let's make that a little darker too. There we go. All right. Oh, and by the way, I found the tip that I cut off too far down on my nozzle from the bottle, and I have glued it back on. I'm going to put a little more glue on that later and, uh, and tape it, and I may be able to use my nozzles on it after I recut it higher up. So, there is hope. Okay, we're back. The masking has dried. The watercolor has dried. So what we're going to do first is we're going to take off the tape. This is the artist tape. Just use your fingernail to get out, get that out. Oops, we have a little leakage. And there's the other one. Very good. There. Oh, it tore the paper just a little bit right there. Now, I'm going to take a rubber cement pickup. It's an eraser. You can find at any art store. And I'm going to pick up the little bits of masking that we put down yesterday. Oh, I'm liking it. Okay, there we go. And like I was saying, if you do it a little less thick, it uh, dries faster. Okay. Oh, this is exciting. I'm, uh, as, as this uh, stuff comes off. I'm taking it off of my eraser. These erasers can accumulate quite a bit of grunge on them. And okay. Yes, I'll show you the difference between a grungy old rubber cement picker-upper and a new one. That's the corner I just used, but they do get kind of bad. Now the tape stopped just now, so I have gotten this far. Uh, Everything's dry, the watercolor's removed, and I took a brush pen and uh, just did a little accent on my card. I took a knife and uh, took off the paper tape from the board it was attached to, and now I have a 4 by 6 mat that I will put, there we go, adjust that a little bit. So we have a finished product. That could be used as a, uh, a nice little card, or you could frame it. Now, if you uh, do a painting, uh, we'd love it if you'd post it on our Facebook page. That's for Ranch Cordova Arts. Thank you for staying creative and watching today. Bye for now.